My dearly beloved in Christ, today, on Mother's Day, I would like to speak about our Heavenly Mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary. And when we think about mothers, those of you who are mothers, understand, you know how much love God puts in your heart for a child. And when a young mother has her first child, she might even wonder, well, if I have another child, will I have to take this love that I have for my son or daughter, will I have to take this love and divide it in two? And then if there's a third child and a fourth, will I have to divide that love up among the children so that I cannot love them as much as I right now love my only child? Well, the reality is that God in his goodness and wisdom gives a mother a new capacity to love for every child that comes along. So a mother has one child, she has so much love for that child, she would do anything for that child. But when another child comes, she doesn't have to love the first child less. She doesn't have to somehow take away some of that love in order to give it to the second child because God gives her another capacity, a new capacity to love that second child just as much as she loves the first child. And even a mother with a large family loves each of those children singly, individually, with a tremendous mother's love. So we think of our Blessed Mother in heaven, how God has given her a capacity to love all of her children. We are not just a number with our Blessed Mother. You think of how many of us there are in this church, and that's just one little portion of the world. And Our Lady has children all over the world, and yet she loves each of them as if, as if each one were her only child. And this love, this unique love of Our Blessed Mother for her children, is something that God gave to her, that Our Lord gave to her from the cross. When he looked down upon our Blessed Mother and said, referring to St. John, his apostle, Behold thy son, and to St. John, Behold thy mother, he at the same time, <laughs> at, <coughs> at the same time, gave her heart this capacity to love all of us because St. John represented us. He was a representative of all of those who follow our Lord, join the church, they also are our Blessed Mother's children. And when we think today on the 13th of May, how Our Lady came to Fatima and why she came. She came because she is a loving mother. And she was very concerned for her children wandering from the right path. She came to admonish. She came to plead. She came to teach how we must love and serve God in order to get to heaven. And she did this because she is a loving mother. A mother is primarily, or it would seem, most mothers in the world, they think first and foremost of the material and physical needs of their children, to feed them and so forth. But what is much more important is the welfare of the soul. And the primary duty of mothers is to instill virtue in their children, to give them a good example, to admonish them, to teach them to love God. And so we think about our Blessed Mother. What is her primary concern for us? It is about our immortal souls, that we persevere in the faith, that we save our immortal souls. It reminds me of a vision I read of one saint who had a vision of our Blessed Mother, and she had a large cape. But under the cape, there were all sorts of wild animals. And she was very surprised at this. And then it was explained to her that those wild animals are symbols of sinners. A sinner is one who has deformed, you might say, his nature, that image and likeness of God in his soul. And so is like a wild animal, like a beast. And Our Lady went on to say that 
these wild animals under her cape were sinners that she shields from the just wrath of Almighty God, praying for them, pleading with them to be converted so that they will not be lost. One of the beautiful titles we have of our Blessed Mother in the litany of Loreto is Refuge of Sinners, Pray for Us. Sinners who fear the wrath of Almighty God nevertheless can go to our Blessed Mother, humbly asking her for help, to help them to conquer their sins, to change their lives, because she will never reject a sinner who is repentant, who turns to her and begs her help. She is the refuge of sinners. She is a mother, the spiritual mother of all her children. So today on Mother's Day, let us not forget our Heavenly Mother. Let us thank her for all that she does for us, for her solicitude, for her tender compassion, and her deep interest in every single one of her children. But let us also remember our duty towards her. St. Louis Marie de Montfort says in his book on true devotion that a true devotion to our Blessed Mother has five qualities, if it is true devotion. It must be interior, tender, holy, constant, and disinterested. And I would like to talk in particular about that second quality, a tender devotion to our Blessed Mother. Tender means it comes from the heart. When we honor our Blessed Mother, it's not just going through a routine of saying certain prayers, <coughs> certain prayers in her honor or putting flowers before her shrine. These are wonderful things and very good to do, but they must come from a tender love in the heart. Our Lady has a tender love for her children. We ought to have a tender, childlike devotion and love for her in return. So let us remember during this month of May as we honor our Blessed Mother to have a love and a devotion that comes from the heart, to pray to our Lord to give us that kind of a devotion to his mother. And remember also that one of the best things we can do to honor Our Lady is to imitate her wonderful virtues. St. Louis Marie de Montfort lists what he calls the ten principal virtues of Our Lady. And we can reflect upon them and pray for the grace to imitate those virtues. Several that I would point out in particular, first and foremost, her conformity to the will of God, her love of God, and her desire to always do the holy will of God. As Our Lady said at the Annunciation to the angel, may it be done to me according to thy word. In other words, may God's will be done in my life. She only wanted to do the will of God, and we also should seek to fulfill God's will. Our Blessed Mother also lived a life of continual prayer. Constantly, her heart was lifted up to God, was united to God. She was filled with charity towards her neighbor, love of God and love of neighbor. She was utterly sinless and pure, and our Blessed Mother has especially a great love for the virtue of purity. We can think about her modesty, her modest reserve, and what a beautiful virtue Our Lady gives us the example of. Women in particular should be sure to observe the Mary-like standards of modesty, to imitate that virtue of our Blessed Mother, and so on down the list. Remember, again, our devotion to her is really meaningless if we don't strive to imitate her to become like her, to become pleasing to her, that we might be pleasing to her divine Son. So reflect today on Mother's Day on that, the devotion to our Heavenly Mother, the tender love that we should have for her, and the effort we should make to imitate her virtues. Just recently, I finished reading a book about an American religious She's canonized in, in the modern church, but no doubt a very saintly person, Elizabeth Ann Seton. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about her life because I found it so inspiring. Elizabeth Ann Bailey was her maiden name. She was born in New York City in 1774, one year before the Revolutionary War. She was an Anglican, as was all her family. 
Her father was a physician and a very charitable man, taking care of the sick. Her mother died when she was only two or three years old, leaving her and her sister without a mother. Well, her father remarried, but she never had the same connection with her stepmother. But her stepmother did have this good quality of concern for the less fortunate people in the city. She was very charitable. And Elizabeth would go with her stepmother around to give food, etc., to those in need. And she always, throughout her life, had that concern for the poor. She was one of the founding members of a society to help the widows and orphans. Well, when she was 19 years old, she married a man named William Seaton. Now, his father had a thriving business, a commercial business with ships, sailing and, and trade. But he fell on hard times after he passed away. His son, Elizabeth's wife, took over the family business, but it went bankrupt. And not only did it go bankrupt, he also lost his health. Uh, William and Elizabeth Seaton had five children, and after the youngest one was born, the father's tuberculosis was so bad that the doctors recommended he go somewhere, travel on an ocean voyage. They thought he would recover his health. So they went, he and his wife and oldest daughter, they went to Italy. And they went to Italy because when he was in the ship business, he had a partner that lived in uh, Italy. So they went there to stay at this man's home. The name of the family was the Felicis. So they went to stay with this Catholic family. Now again, they were Protestant. Well, sadly, while they were there, William Seaton died. But Elizabeth, with her daughter, before she could return to the United States, lived with his family for a couple months. And she was so impressed by the fact that they went to Mass every single day. And she began to ask questions about the faith. And what particularly drew her to the Catholic religion was the fact that they would receive Holy Communion. And she wanted to receive the body and blood of Christ. She knew that her church had a communion service, her Protestant church, but it did not have the Holy Eucharist, did not have the body and blood of Christ. And that is one thing that drew her to the faith. And as I said, I believe her charity earned for her the grace. When she returned to New York, she went to the priest and asked for instructions in the faith. Now, this was a time when Catholics were very much persecuted, and that did not deter her. She received instructions in the faith. She was received into the church, made her first Holy Communion, also had a great love for our Blessed Mother. And it didn't bother her that, again, she was basically disowned by her relatives, Every time she would try and start some kind of a business to support her children, because she was quite destitute at this point, she started a school, and then the Protestant families withdrew their children from the school because they didn't want them to come under her influence as a Catholic. She was thinking about moving to Quebec, Canada, where the Catholic faith was strong. But the only bishop in the United States at that time, John Carroll, invited her to Baltimore, where he lived, to start a school there, where there were more Catholics. Well, she went down there, and eventually, with the help of the bishop, she started a religious order, the very first order of nuns in the United States, and it was called the Sisters of Charity. They opened schools, free schools, for children who couldn't afford it to teach children the faith. During the Civil War, Mother Seton died in 1821 at the age of 46. But during the Civil War, her daughters, her religious, helped on the battlefield. 200 of the Sisters of Charity helped uh, as nurses on the battlefield. And again, they took care of orphans and taught children in school, etc. All these charitable works. But I think back to all that she did and think of the fact she became a Catholic. Why? Number one, the example of this family that her husband was partners with, living with them and seeing them live their faith and love their faith. The desire for the Holy Eucharist and the devotion that we have to our Blessed Mother. So these are our heritage. The Holy Eucharist, 
devotion to our Blessed Mother, the two primary devotions in the Catholic faith. Love for our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament, love and devotion to our Blessed Mother. And this is what drew her to the church. And again, she accomplished so much good. Let us also love our Blessed Mother tenderly. Let us love our Divine Lord and let us appreciate what we have in the faith. We didn't have to go through, most likely, I doubt anyone here, had to go through all the obstacles and the persecution and being disowned that she endured to become a Catholic. But may we appreciate as much as she did the privilege, the blessing of the true faith and all that we have in the Catholic religion, our Lord, and also in a special way, our Blessed Mother, our own spiritual mother. May we love her tenderly in return. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, amen.